Hello, I'm David Kerr and you are watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. The head of the Vatican Department responsible for the sacred liturgy says it is urgent that Catholics return to Sunday Mass as soon and as safely as possible. The Prefect of the Congregation for Divine Worship, Cardinal Robert Seurat, says that the Christian life cannot be sustained without the Holy Eucharist. Cardinal Seurat published his comments in a new letter approved by Pope Francis and addressed to the presidents of Episcopal conferences the world over. Entitled Letters Return to the Eucharist with Joy, Cardinal Seurat's communique recognises the upheaval caused by COVID-19 restrictions to the life of most Catholics, with many dioceses across the globe restricting or even suspending the public availability of Holy Mass. Cardinal Seurat's letter observes, quote, that the Christian community has never pursued isolation and has never made the church a city with closed doors. Hence, he says, it is necessary to return to the Eucharist as soon as possible with a purified heart, with renewed amazement and an increased desire to meet the Lord. To the United States now and the co-founder of the religious order, the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, has been appointed an auxiliary bishop of Chicago. 63-year-old Father Bob Lombardo was one of eight Capuchin priests who founded the order in New York's Bronx area Back in 1987, their aim was to live out a radical form of Franciscan poverty at the service of the poor and the homeless. Father Bob, as he's known, has been based in Chicago since 2005 after being invited by the city's previous archbishop, the late Cardinal Francis George, to help serve the poor in the city's west side. Now, Father Bob will serve the entire archdiocese as an auxiliary to the present archbishop, Cardinal Blaise Supic. In that task, Bishop-elect Lombardo will be joined by two other new auxiliaries, Monsignor Geoffrey Grob and Monsignor Kevin Birmingham. Monsignor Grob has been Judicial Vicar or Senior Canon Lawyer of the Archdiocese of Chicago since 2017, while Monsignor Birmingham only recently stood down as Cardinal Supic's secretary, a post he'd held for the past six years. The three priests will be consecrated as bishops on November 13th, the Feast of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. The United States Department of Education has published new guidelines aimed at expanding religious liberty protection on college campuses across the U.S. Entitled Improving Free Inquiry, Transparency and Accountability at Colleges and Universities, the new regulations allow the U.S. Department of Education to suspend or even cut federal funding from public universities that violate religious liberty, as defined by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Hence, if a public university fails to give a religious student group the same rights as other campus organisations, such as the use of facilities or access to funding, they could now lose federal dollars. The new regulations also attempt to ensure that differing ideas and viewpoints are permitted at public universities, while also giving private and religious institutions the freedom to adopt their own speech standards so long as they comply with them. Unveiling the new guidelines, the U.S. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos said that, quote, students should not be forced to choose between their faith and their education, and an institution controlled by a religious organization should not have to sacrifice its religious beliefs to participate in department grants and programs. A flourishing family is one based upon self-giving. That was the message of the Archbishop of Krakow during his annual diocesan family pilgrimage Archbishop Marek Jadrzejewski told those gathered at the popular Polish shrine of Kalvaria Zebradowska that the Christian family is a sacred community modelled upon the Holy Trinity and orientated towards living for one another. This contrasts, he noted, with certain popular trends in contemporary European thought that would suggest human fulfilment is to be found in self-centeredness and living in isolation from or even at the expense of others. Not so, says Archbishop Jadrzejewski. Living for their children, he said, provides mothers and fathers with a source of vocation, dignity and joy. Meanwhile, children too, he noted, have obligations towards their parents by virtue of the fourth commandment. The Archbishop concluded his remarks by entrusting those pilgrims present to Mary, the mother of Jesus, in order, he said, to teach everyone how to live for others and not for themselves. To the United Kingdom now, and England and Wales have reported a sharp rise in the number of abortions in the first six months of 2020. That's compared to the previous year. According to new government statistics just published, there were nearly 110,000 unborn babies aborted in England and Wales between the 1st of January and the 30th of June this year. That's an increase of over 4,000 from the same time period in 2019, a year that saw the highest number of recorded abortions in the history of the two countries. The spike in the number of abortions is being 
attributed by pro-life campaigners to the recent introduction of so-called DIY home abortion pills. They were made legal across England and Wales in March of this year. The campaign group Right to Life UK described the new statistics as, quote, a national tragedy, with each abortion, they say, representing a failure to protect unborn babies in the womb and a failure to support vulnerable mothers. Meanwhile, the organisers of the United States March for Life have unveiled their theme for next year's event, which will take place in Washington, D.C. in January. Those gathered will march under the slogan of Together Strong, Life Unites. The annual March for Life was launched in 1974, following the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to legalise abortion across the North American country the year previous. Around half a million people participated in this year's march. They were addressed in person by President Donald Trump, the first sitting president to attend the march. The speakers for next year's event have yet to be announced. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more headlines from across the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.